two-time Hall of Fame inductees, Brent Godarzy and Marty Young. Back-to-back -back number one trucking firm in the nation. Back-to-back -back best attorney and best law firm in East Texas. Hello, Buckeye Nation, and welcome to the Gilmer Buckeyes Coaches Show. I'm your host, Jeff Rash, and I'm joined today with the athletic director and head football coach and new district champion. Good stuff. <laughs> Mr. Alan Metzl. Yes, sir. So, Alan, Pleasant Grove came to Gilmer this last Friday, and to be honest with you, it was a little bit of a letdown, kind of a oh. boring game, mm. a little humdrum. Todd and I were eating popcorn and kind of just yeah. chatting. I'm glad game, somebody you know. was. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, so this is my favorite moment I've been waiting on right here. This mm -hmm. is the district uh, championship trophy, and uh, it was it's it it's back home where it belongs that in Gilmer, right. Texas, right? Hard earned, and uh, grateful to have it back in this town. Yeah, that's a lot of work, isn't that's it? That's right a there? lot of work. So we're gonna put that baby right here where yes, it belongs. Sir. Yes, sir. Uh, what an incredible game! I mean, good grief! I've watched. We have talked about for the last at least twenty years. I, I can't think of a game. We, we played a lot of great games here. I think yes. about Kilgore. I think about the Gladewater game. Mm -hmm. There's been a lot of good games here. And even in playoff games, you can go to Quero. You right. can talk about Gladewater and Longview. Longview. You mm -hmm. can talk about even the ones we lost, like L.E. over there. Yeah. And you can talk about all the big games. Mm -hmm. But, man, for this stadium, in my book, that's Amazing. the best game I've ever watched in this in this stadium. It, it had a lot of drama. You know, it had the being behind at half. It had the... Uh, some momentum swings in fourth quarter, yeah. and then the drama of having to hit the field goal to win the game. That's, that's with zero special. on the clock. Yeah, yeah, and and the thing about it is most people have have kind of mentioned and this a common theme uh, around town for this weekend has been you. It, it, that would be the corniest movie script of <laughs> yeah, all time. Say, like, yeah, oh, come on, man. He, nobody does it like <laughs> that. That's just what they do in Hollywood, and yet it happened. And yet it happened in real yeah. life. We got to watch right. it. You know, It was awesome. And uh, so it was incredible. And we're going to mm -hmm. walk through a lot of plays today, so we're not going to talk about anything other than football today. Mm -hmm. So uh, ridiculous. I mean, we come into the game, uh, PG, undefeated. Gilmer undefeated in district. Mm -hmm. It's the battle for the. We knew it was going to be that way. Oh, we yeah. hoped it was going to be that way. Fight. It was we a heavyweight that. fight. The right. two big boys, mm -hmm. uh, state ranked teams. Right. They were ranked number two. Yeah, you know. and, and they come into our house. We haven't beat them the last five games. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's that psychological advantage, yeah. if you want to call it yeah. that. Some people would, some mm -hmm. people wouldn't. You may not consider it that way. Uh, You've got a really big physical team. Right. Now, they've got a couple of players out, but nonetheless, mm -hmm. they're they're enormous. No doubt. Their offensive line, defensive line. Got some great athletes. They're several D1 players on yes. the team. Yes. And uh, so it was a – it was a – it was going to be a battle, we knew. It was going to take everything we had. Yeah, going to be a battle. Right. And it was. So it we was. go down, you know, in halftime. Mm -hmm. uh, we're down 14 points. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're able to move the ball. I noticed in the first quarter – you know, it took a little while to figure out mm -hmm. their blocking schemes. Like, mm -hmm. the, you know, the defensive mm -hmm. line has to figure out, okay, that's right. when he does this, i got to do this. Absolutely. You know, that's and, exactly and that started happening. And in the second quarter, mm -hmm. you could see them start figuring it, it out. And all of a that's sudden, right. that, that little counter play mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. wasn't getting right. the same amount of yardage. Correct. And so we were talking about it up here, mm -hmm. and we were like, they're going to come out and make that adjustment at, mm -hmm. at halftime. Mm -hmm. They're going to shut that down. Right. That's, that's, that's what happened. Right. And so then you, you've got the drama we're going to go through with the fumble and the whole deal. We're going to show that play. And then uh, down to the wire, mm -hmm. I, I worried because we had eight seconds on the clock and they were trying oh. to get to down the ball and the referee's it, fumbling around. He kept dropping it. <laughs> and uh, I lost about 10 years right there. Just those uh, about five seconds. Oh, my gosh. It was like Laurel and Hardy down there. It was crazy. And then we finally get it, spike it with two seconds, and we're sitting there with a chip shot. Mm -hmm. Uh, but still, you're nervous because you're oh, yeah. thinking these boys do this on extra points all the time. Mm -hmm. But what if, right? Right. So uh, huge finish. Uh, what did you see? There was a lot to see to like. Right. But I'm going to ask you both, like mm -hmm. I often do. What did mm -hmm. you see you liked, and what did you not like? And let's start with the stuff you liked because there was a lot mm -hmm. of good stuff. Yeah, lots of good stuff. First of all, th what I liked was the week of preparation. Unbelievable <laughs> focus. Unbelievable buy-in into defensive game plan, offensive game plan, uh, being into each other. And, you know, I know a lot of that sounds cliche, 
but it, but it really was it, and you saw it play out. So the preparation was critical. That, that was key. Uh, the day of the game, laser focus. You know, there, we didn't have things that we were having to take care of distraction-wise. Uh, laser focus. So then, you know, you get into the, the game and, and, you know, some people may say, well, you didn't start fast again. Well, it was, that wasn't the point. When you're talking about not starting fast, it's more about what are you not doing? Well, we were playing a real good team. And so there's a difference when you may be doing certain things, but they're stopping it. Yeah. So, you know, there were yeah. things that we had to do better. It wasn't that we were doing poorly. We had to do better. And uh, the guys figured that out. They, they raised their game to a higher level. And we, we go in at halftime. Of course, we've had several games where we were behind at half. Yeah, Lindale. Yeah, they, we walked in. You know. They're like, we got it, man. We got it. We just got it. We know what we yeah. got to do. The defense was getting their stuff tightened up. We knew some things we needed to go do on offense. The other thing, we knew we had to get our play count up to get them tired. And, and you saw that Yeah, because at halftime, the, you guys were like, Half the play count, I think, uh, that that they had right. way off schedule of the sixty-five Correct. snaps. You Correct. Wanted. But we were able to in the third quarter start getting that up, yeah. and that was part of it. We had to get some drives going, and we yeah. were able to. They started getting tired, which uh, started to swing that momentum. Yeah. And, uh, then and we you were you were strolling them sideline to sideline a lot the whole night. Todd and I were talking about the fact that. We, we started seeing a lot of this mm -hmm. on the defensive mm -hmm. line, you know. Exactly. And they were getting tired right. of scraping and having to chase side to we were side. We trying right? to go vertically as far as we could and horizontally as far as we could. And, yeah. uh, and eventually, you get tired. And yeah. uh, so I think that, that began to play in there, and uh, we kind of made yeah. a move at that point. You told us you had a you felt like you had a good game plan, and Tommy mm -hmm. Edwards has done a Phenomenal. great job this year defensively. Really. He's a good defensive he coordinator. He is. He's doing a super he, job. He felt very, very comfortable mm -hmm. and confident well, and about I'll the be game honest, plan. I, I know uh, it wasn't necessarily everybody probably was surprised when I deferred, mm -hmm. uh, and I just had to go with my gut on that, that I felt like our defense was going to play well. I yeah. really did. And I was, it, it was my hope we would make a stop and get that score before half and then get the, ha the ball yeah. back. And we really were in position to do that, and we got a penalty. Yeah. And, and it was on us. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it wasn't like an official thing. That was on us. If, had we not done that, we'd had a minute 56 and a chance to go do what we were hoping to do. Yeah. We, we kind of got ourselves Even on that seven. one. So you came out yeah. behind the eight ball. Yeah. But yeah. overall, I, man, defense played great Phenomenal. across the board. I mean, that defensive line to me has been just a – Story all year. all year. Yes, I mean those guys penetration, yes. filling the gap, making tackles, Being disciplined, correct. You know sacks. Mm -hmm. I mean they've just been they really a, a really good. They're line. very active. It and, is. Uh, they they set up our linebackers to be able to just flow and go make plays. Uh, Jet Jones had twenty three tackles the other night. Twenty three tackles. Yeah, That's crazy. phenomenal. Yeah, it's so, insane. Yeah, they play great. What did you see that we still got to work on going to the playoffs? Well. You know, I, you would like to not have to have as long to figure out some of the things, you know. Uh, now, we're playing a very good team the other yeah. night. And they very had a game plan, too. They the did. And they didn't very come into well here coached. just like, no. going to show you everything. No. They, they, and Right. They yeah. came out. They ran some things, gotten some sets that they haven't done. Yeah. So we had to adjust to those things. Uh, you know, we lost the turnover battle. We had two picks. They had uh, no turnovers. One uh, we thought we would have gotten. And if you got to have two but, picks, though, having yeah. it on fourth. Well, one was fourth down. Fourth down, yeah. same as a punt. Exactly. The other one was deep in The other in one, we were going to the end zone. Yeah. If we'd thrown it a little bit more inside, Mike yeah. could have gotten it. But, uh, yeah, you know, you'd like to have zero. But we, we like to create a few more turnovers mm -hmm. uh, and, and be on the plus side of that margin. But, uh, you know, overall, I was really pleased with this game. Yeah. I, I think, boy, if you're going to peak, this was you picked the right week mm -hmm. to do it, buddy. And I thought mm -hmm. the guys did just that. I love mm -hmm. the – Heart, you know, when, when you saw them come out, and I could see Smith and some of the leaders on the team, mm -hmm. after halftime, they came out and they were just amped up. Right. Like they were on the field, mm -hmm. really getting into it. The crowd was into the game on both sides of the ball. Of right. course, it was one of those great Friday nights that you it remember was. for a long time. But That's right. the, the, I could just tell you could see the momentum shifting mm -hmm. mentality-wise. I right. mean, you know, they were just coming up and hitting and mm -hmm. And uh, really doing well. So let's go through some plays because okay. we got a lot of good stuff to look at. And we yes, want to get into it today. And then at the, after that, we're going to talk to you about uh, where you can view the game and what we're trying to do to, so that everybody can watch or listen this next week. So right. this first one, uh, the thing that you did a lot uh, differently this mm -hmm. week is, uh, you know, Brandon didn't stay in the pocket much. He did mm -hmm. a lot of bootlegging. Yeah, we did. We got him sprint outs, dash game, uh, running on the edges. Here's a, a bootleg that you're going to see here. It was our first offensive play. And 
So we're, we're trying to get uh, Cross and Dylan, Flewellen across the formation. We get Brandon outside. You can see some of the big guys they have, but you know Brandon has the advantage there with his speed. So uh, just trying to get him out in space was yeah. one of the critical things. And of course, he, he ended up with uh, 183 yards rushing. So Well, and this is one of those impressive. rushes right here. This is, this is one of those keepers that you guys had decided, hey, we're this gonna we're gonna add our extra threat, right? You know, right. So you're you got gonna, Brandon could be if he wasn't the quarterback, he, he could just easily be a running back, running back. Receiver. You know, he really could. Yeah. He's very talented. Yeah, he really is. So you're gonna see here. We're gonna do an outside zone play, a stretch play with the quarterback. I've got Davion here. Davion Smith highlighted. Had watched, a great game. By great the way. game in all facets of the game, yeah. and uh, just watch him here as he blocks this out. This inside backer. Puts him on his rear end. Incredible physicality there. Of course, Brandon gets out into the secondary, 34-yard gain. He has a way, Todd calls him, says he has a way of getting skinny down the sideline. He does. I he, always think he's running out of bounds, right? and he just figures out how to. Somehow he's able to twist and torque his body in and ways he, and, and run stay in a, bounds. Yeah, it's unreal. He, he really is. Big is gain skinny. on that play, and, and that was just one of his big runs you'll see. Right. Now, these next uh, couple of things are going to be defensive side of the ball. Right. And the first two are going to be mostly about defensive line. Correct. So you're going to see here, and the, the reason it's we have a focus here uh, on the defensive line is because the style play they have, mm -hmm. and it's so critical what the defensive line does and uh, doing their key, reading their keys and getting penetration. So you see them, I'm going to go to the, the end zone here, you're going to just see them get up the field and clog up that trap play right up the middle. You've got to start there and then work out. Yeah, and those guys run those counters and They're traps. Very They're very good at so it. They're so good. They call that offense what they call the whole their whole setup full tilt. Right. Because they come, come to the ball fast, execute immediately, and, and they run like the same plays over mm -hmm. and over, but they run them perfectly. Well, and they, they have the same scheme, but they block it different ways. And so they're influencing, they're blocking down, they're kicking out. So it's really hard on a defense because – they're giving you false keys. They're giving you good keys. And, you know, you have to really hone in and be disciplined or you get out of position and they crease you. Yeah. So they're, they're and really And they've got the athletes to do it, they by do. the way. They this do. number 15 blew my mind uh, when freshman. Todd said he's a freshman. Yeah. I'm like, oh, my gosh. Incredible. Because they've got a freshman class up there like one you've never seen before. Correct. We're going to have to fight them the next few years. And that number six that plays for them, Nick he's Martin. a D1. He's going he's to Oklahoma. Oklahoma State. Yeah, mm -hmm. so uh, I thought they State. did a good job of shutting him down. 15 did more damage than six. He, he did, had some big plays. He really did. And 15 hadn't gotten to play a lot because he's been injured earlier in the year. So this was his really coming on the scene night. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a look at this one from the uh, end zone camera. I'm going to highlight Jaden Griffin here and show you how he fits down into uh, the defensive line. So he's a DB. But we're going to bring – Davion Smith sets the edge. I've got a line drawn there. His job is to make sure the ball turns inside. And then here you see Jaden fit down inside. Really physical there. Great defensive play. And then here comes the linebackers come. behind him. And, and I thought that was great because Jaden is about – what is Jaden's size? 145, 150. Yeah, he's probably. like 5'7". 5'7", uh -huh. yeah. 145. Right. He's got a, 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 a D1 – Oh, he's six back two, coming six at one, him, two forty, and he just yeah. they squared up right. and took him on and made a right. great tackle. Flipped the guy, right. in fact, right into traffic. Now this next one is going to be uh, uh, somebody that I've enjoyed, or, or this is the defensive line. Actually, this is something I I've noticed that we've done well all year. These guys have done a good job this year because we struggled, I thought, a little bit last year with people getting outside on mm -hmm. us. I think they've done a remarkable job this year with the scrape. Right. Getting everybody flowing to the sideline. Mm -hmm. And look, there's a perfect example of what we're right. talking about. Well, PG does a great job with their jet sweep. You know, uh, this is one of the things they talk about at clinics and so forth. And they get to the edge and uh, because they've got so many things inside the trap, the, the buck sweep, et cetera. So watch here. I've got some lines drawn where all the, the defensive players are getting their helmets on the outside, which – makes the running back have to turn back inside, and then here comes the flow of the D-line and the linebackers, and we make the stop for a very minimal game. Big play. Yeah, and, and play. because they do execute that so well. That is right. This next play is one of a very exciting run. we got a lot of good backs. We always talk about it, but this is one of my favorites. This is Ward Jared on Ward. a big run and a big block. Exactly. You're going to see, uh, Jared, we've got another outside zone play, and uh, we're going to get him the ball. He's really dangerous in space. So that's Jared right there. I've got highlighted. And then you're going to see Luke Watson, who played a good bit of fullback the other night. Watch him come around and just take 
number 20 and bury him outside. And that gave Jared the crease that he needed to get into the secondary. And then you see Rowan Fuellen do a great job of pushing Nick Martin up, up the field and out of the way to, to add to the yardage. One of the keys of the game we talked about before in pregame, Todd mentioned what he thought. One of mine was that that Luke Watson had to have a good game. He did, on he, both sides of the ball. Yeah, he had to have a good game. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I specifically was talking about him being in the fullback position mm-hmm. that night mm-hmm. and being able to get blocks on some of those key, you know, Spec- six. Specifically Nick Martin. Yeah, yeah, no yeah doubt. Martin we knew, we know how good he is. And and he played, he, he set up a lot of stuff. He did. You don't really see did. that because you're always watching the ball carrier. Mm-hmm. But if you go back and watch the game and look right. at the setups, mm-hmm. the blocks that had to happen to, to get those – Guys out in open field, exactly. he had a heck of a game. Really what did. a way to go out as a senior. Oh, right? great, great, great last game. home game, no doubt. This next one uh, we're going to look at is the uh, a Dylan touchdown in his favorite corner. He scored a whole bunch of them over here on this left side. You're going to see the DB is uh, sagging him inside, and so we're going to run a flag route. And uh, Dylan, do, I mean, uh, Brandon does a super job of throwing the ball outside where he can run to it. Great move by Dylan to set up the DB. Of course, you put it around him, and uh, he's, he's really gonna good. He's going to go up and go right. get it. Now, I want to, as you mentioned, there's times that you don't see things that are going on uh, inside the tackle box, and you see Jared here make a tremendous block so that Brandon could make that throw. So here comes a linebacker on a blitz, and he picks up the linebacker and gave flips Brandon, him. Yeah. gave Brandon the time to just throw the, the ball. Time, just enough time. That's exactly right. Uh, to to get that ball out. Now, younger brother. Flew brother. Ellen didn't want to be uh, showing Outdone. up in that same corner. Right. So we've got uh, Rowan, and uh, he's playing inside his receiver. His first game back, he missed three games. He's missed yeah. a couple here since he hurt his arm. And uh, so same type route, a flag route. Again, they're playing us inside. So uh, we run a flag route to him, and he hits the opening there. Brandon makes a great throw, and we're into the end zone. Pretty big play there. Now this next one, this is a pass that was completed also to uh, to Dylan, but uh, this one, it, what we want to focus on is the is the move that Brandon puts on Martin. Correct. This is a uh, second and eleven, and you're going to see Martin come on a blitz. Brandon sees him, makes him miss, gets out in the open, hits uh, Dylan for about I don't know 17, 18 yards. Huge play. It, it, the reason we put this one on here is just to look at the athleticism and the awareness that Brandon has to be able to sidestep yeah, a player poise. at that level. Yeah, stayed poised. And uh, then makes a great throw. You know, and that was a key play in the game. Oh, yeah. You think about, I mean, there were a lot of key plays. Every right. play was key in this one because right. we got to do few of them, Correct. more of them. But uh, Todd, I was picking on him during the broadcast because he kept going, this could be the play of the game. This could be the play of the game. And, and <laughs> I kept telling him at the end of it, I was like, you were right on each one. Right. They, they each became more important one, than the next one. It wouldn't one. have mattered. Yeah, right. that's exactly. right. Exactly. So, no uh, doubt. So this next one is uh, is a, a great inside post route that uh, Rowan runs, and this was a you know big gain and very important. at the. T- we needed this at this time. We did. And you see this is the opposite of what we've been running. We were running flag routes where they bump their guy out. He's more head up, and so now we're going to get inside of him. So uh, Rowan attacks uh, the DB sticks his foot, bends inside, and Brandon throws a great ball, puts it right on his helmet, and now we're down to about the five-yard line. So, you know, when you're playing a defense as good as they are, you've got to have chunk plays. You've got to be able to to not just have to make every five yards at a time. You need yeah. to be able to take some chunk plays because they're really good. And you guys had several of those. We did. Had we several did. of them throughout the night. So this next one is uh, Brandon on a 67-yard uh, TD uh, scramble, right. but what we and, and the run was great, oh, but but, he, but it doesn't happen without a block from one of his buddies. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. you're gonna see him. He's gonna he's gonna drop back. Here he is uh, in the shotgun. He's gonna drop back and move to the right. They blitzed a linebacker, which then left a lane. He saw it, cuts back against the grain. Here comes Dylan. You got two of the fastest guys on your team. Correct. Sprinting down the sideline here. Nobody was going to get them. Once they get out in grass, that's over. Super job yeah. of finding uh, the opening. I'm going to show you here what, what Brandon saw. He drops back. Here comes the backer. Now that's what he saw. And so he sticks his foot and gets up inside, and then, then it's just Brandon being Brandon. You know, he's, he's just very skilled. And look how good a job that Dylan took his time, mm-hmm. waited, 
He didn't go in after the block. He waited for it to come to him and hit it when he needed to. That's exactly. that's good. That's good smart football. And making sure you don't get a penalty. You know, yeah, because you, be you always smart. worry you about that. that yeah, up. exactly. Yeah, because you get a little nervous down there. So this next one, most controversial play of the game. All right, this was the fumble on our sideline that we apparently had because everybody comes on the field. And then they took it away from us. So let's talk about it. I'll start with it. You know, it's a, a bootleg pass by the offense. Tremendous job by the quarterback for uh, PG to get this thing off because Tristan uh, McKeon is right there in his face and hits him right in the chest. So uh, he's under pressure. He's able to hit his uh, receiver coming on a drag route. Rowan finds him, runs him down. And so here at this point, now he's trying to get him down and he rips the ball out at this point. I've got the ball circled coming out, and you see where his foot is, and uh, we recover, and unfortunately, they called the play out of bounds. Yeah. Is that what you told them on the, when you were talking to the referees, did you say, that was unfortunate? Something. That, it looked like something. you were saying something like, oh, that's something. unfortunate. Something like that. Yeah, that's that. what I thought. Yeah. I know you can't say anything about that. Right. Literally, Todd was losing his mind. I thought I was going right. to have to turn his mic off. It, it was but frustrating. he was really, really upset about it. Everybody in the stands were upset about it. I think everybody knows that was a fumble in the stands except the guy that counted. And and we'll just leave it at that. That's one of those unfortunate things because mm -hmm. that literally, that's where they're driving to go tie the ball game up. We had four minutes on the clock mm -hmm. and, and fixing to go into a tie ball game. And this isn't just a preseason game. This is a right. district championship game against mm -hmm. the number two team in the state. You can't make those kind of mistakes. Well, but it happens. It happens. And I get it. Everybody's human. Right. right. We're going to forgive. Right. But, boy, that would have been an absolute nightmare had that gone the other way. I mean, it would have been terrible. It, it, uh, yeah, it would have been very frustrating. The thing that, that we are going to focus on, that we went even at that moment, once we knew there was nothing we could do, is, okay, we have to overcome it. Yeah. We have to overcome the adversity. Well, they went down and scored. You know, we just soon that not have happened. But at that point, now we had, like, what, a minute 46 or so uh, with the ball. And so everybody was like, okay, we just got to go score. Yeah. That's the point. You can't do anything about what has happened. It's all about what can we control. And I love the demeanor. I love the confidence. People made plays. Dylan made great catches. Uh, Brandon made some great throws. The line gave us time. That, that's something that, that can't be understated is the job our line did on their huge defensive oh, front they're all huge. night. And yeah. they, they gave us the time. <laughs> yeah, they, they battled. They battled. This they're, is reminiscent of of the minute nine on the clock against Gladewater in the Correct. playoff game in Longview. It was very similar. It's like we had we had so long to get mm -hmm. down the field. Did you ever at some point think when that when they got that fumble back, of course, luckily they got a 15-yard penalty. Mm -hmm. It backed them up. Right. But had that not, did you think, all right, looking at the clock, because I know how you are with clock mm -hmm. management, mm -hmm. did you ever look at that and say, Okay, looking at the score, looking at the clock, let's just let them score. Uh, you know, did you but, think about that? I did. Or, or, I did. Instead of going for the stop and eating I, up the clock? I did. I, part of it was, you know, it was at a four-minute mark. It wasn't like at a two-and-a-half-minute mark or something like that or even less. Yeah. Uh, to me, that's an extreme and a, yeah. an extreme decision. I still felt like our defense could stop them, you know. Yeah. And so they went down and scored, but it, it didn't get, you know, minute – to me, if you get it back in 50-something seconds, I, f I feel pretty good about being able to move down the field. Yeah. So, you know, you're talking about, to me, if it gets really crazy in the time standpoint, that's when you have to start making some of those uh, extreme decisions. Sorry, this wire's wearing me no, out. That's fine. Okay. Uh, so here we are. We're down <laughs> So we here. march down the field. Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. Dylan makes a great catch on the two-yard line. Two-yard line. And it sets up the chip shot. That's then... Right. The referee, we're trying to down the ball. They dropped the ball, fumbling around. Ooh. That was with eight seconds. Correct. And we go down to two seconds. Two he finally seconds. gets it spiked. Sets up the, the finish of a lifetime. Exactly. You know, I put right here on our, on our film, you got to remember the snapper, the holder, and the kicker all have to do their job. And so many times those, those guys are overlooked unless something goes wrong, yeah. you know, much like officials. <laughs> and uh, so you had Mason Hurt snapping, you had Cody Guidry holding, you got Jose here kicking. All three of the elements were done perfectly, just like they work on all week long, and he drills the thing right through the middle. And then that's when the mayhem started. Yeah, and, and it was and it great. Was a lot that was of fun. A, man, that was, that's as much fun as I've had 
It's pretty in exciting. this stadium in a long time. It yes. was incredible. What a great celebration. And to PG's credit, they are a they are number two in the state ranked and earned that ranking. They were right. a great right. football team. You can't program. take I'm proud of our boys. Mm-hmm. I'm proud of our coaches. Mm-hmm. They have a, Gibson's done a great job yes. over there. And I saw and you saw it too. Mm-hmm. But he gave his kids, I thought, a great speech yeah. after, right here on our field, mm-hmm. right after the game. Mm-hmm. And uh, you can see why their program is what it is. The right. guy's a good guy. He and is. and uh, He's in it so, for the right reasons. Uh, congratulations to PG. If mm-hmm. any of those guys happen to be watching, congratulations on a great year. Mm-hmm. And and and, a, and what a, a hard-fought ball game that no I thought was fought pretty gentlemanly. Oh, yeah. There was, there was not a lot of, mm-hmm. you know, extracurricular that you see from LE and some other teams. and. And I thought it was just a, a two great coaching staffs against two great groups of kids, and it's just what football what is Friday all Night about, Lights man. It is, is what all it's about. all about. So yeah. thank you for bringing the district trophy home. You bet. Uh, so on behalf be of the part. town. Now let's talk about Canton. Okay. So Canton, Lindale, Texas, mm-hmm. nice stadium, beautiful mm-hmm. new stadium. Right. Uh, Seven thirty. Friday. Friday night. Yes, sir. Let's talk about Canton. What are we looking at? Uh, Canton is. They run a spread formation offensively. Uh, they do a lot of RPOs. They, they run a lot of uh, quicks where we're trying to get the ball out of our hands fast. You know, they are trying to get the ball out of their hands fast. So, uh, you know, they, I would say they're well coached. They're disciplined. Uh, we, we've got to do a good job of taking care of what we do. Uh, defensively, they're typically a four down uh, look, four, two, five, four, three, that kind of a thing. Uh, they play hard. They have a really good middle linebacker that'll get after. He's about six one, probably about two twenty. Good looking guy and plays hard. So uh, you know we're going to have to execute. The thing for us, and we we had our staff meeting uh, earlier, our coaching staff, is we want to have the level of preparation that we had last week every week now. That that's the Absolutely, new bar. Yeah. And so whoever we're playing, that we want that laser focus. We want that kind of buy-in. We want that kind of energy uh, in our practices, in our study of the games. And so when we do that, then we should be able to yeah. to do what we want to do. Well, you guys had a great game plan going into this one against just an incredible team once again. So good luck with that. So let's talk just a minute about, as we close out, uh, where people are going to be able to watch the game. Because, folks, it's out of our control. We wouldn't move it if we didn't have to. But when you get into the playoffs, the rules change a little bit. So we have a mandate from UIL. Uh, that we they have a contract with a company uh, that we have to broadcast the the games live through, mm-hmm. and it's uh, NFHS National Football High School NFHS, and so you can go to their website and watch it. There's also a, an app you can download on your smart TV that they have. There is a subscription fee. It's like eleven dollars or something like that uh a month which is the one i would do or 70 dollars a year I'd, I'd start out with the monthly mm-hmm. subscription obviously um and uh, you can do that we're going to also try uh alan to broadcast the game we're going to have to you know change some of our setup with the help of etex uh, but we're going to also try to do the audio only mm-hmm. through etex channel one or 601 uh, like we used to do right. before we could you know broadcast the games right. and so we're going to try to pull that off i can't guarantee it but that's mm-hmm. that's our our goal and i'm sure eric Connitz will figure out a way to work with charlie kind of and get that done if they can it's there it's the failure is on them and they let the entire town down <laughs> so no pressure there uh, on eric and charlie got it so but that's we're going to try to do that and we'll also try to uh, pop it audio only through gilmerbuckeyes.com okay now that's our that's our goal i right. can promise you it's going to be on the nfhs mm-hmm. I, we're going to try to do those other two. Right. So you, you just know that there is a fee. It's cheap. You're going to get to watch all the games the rest mm-hmm. of the month. You know, for, So I would, I would go that route if it were me and watch mm-hmm. the game, not listen to the game. But do what you want. We're going to try to give you both options out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are the home team. We are the visiting team. We're the visiting they team. They won the flip on that. They won the flip. Mm-hmm. So we'll be on the visitor side right. on, fr- on Friday night. Right. And uh, we're going to do the broadcast uh, again live. You can go there and watch it. Uh, and then also the replays are going to be the same. So after the game, we'll be uh, Eric will be uploading the games mm-hmm. to the uh, GilmerBuckeyes.com website, and you can go there and watch you know archive games. Uh, and then also Etex will be playing it like they normally do on ten o'clock on Saturday morning. YouTube. Is that right? YouTube, yeah. uh, YouTube, and then and then of course on Etex ten o'clock, and then I think again on Wednesday at like six or whatever they normally do. So. 
that's where you can watch the game. So again, Coach, congratulations. Thank you so on a, much. On an incredible season, and now it's playoff time. Yes, sir. So let's uh, we got we only got six six more games. Six weeks. You win six more, you get another trophy. There you go. We well, actually get a trophy every week, but you get right. the big trophy. You get the real one. You get the big one at, right. at six games. So mm-hmm. uh, let's go. Uh, let's do that. So Buckeye Nation, we need every one of you that can. To show up because I'm gonna tell you something. Doesn't it make a big difference when the crowds into oh, the game? Gosh, yes. I mean, yeah. the momentum Amazing and the energy. energy when you guys are bringing noise, mm-hmm. make bring the noisiest things you can find. Mm-hmm. Your children, that's a good start. Noisemakers, rattles, whatever you've got, come and make noise and stand and scream because it gets it really gets the momentum. It gets into the head of the other team. Right. It's intimidating. This was an intimidating environment was Friday great. night, man. The perfect. cheerleaders, the drill right. team, the band was rocking the they, house. They were all over the it. crowd was up on both mm-hmm. sides. I mean, it was electric here. Really we was. need to bring that same energy to Lindale. It's not that far. It's about a 35-minute drive, something like that, 45, 40 minutes maybe. Make the drive to Lindale. Come out and support the Buckeyes. If you don't, watch it on television, obviously, and we'll be bringing it to you live. So uh, congratulations on the district championship, and we will see you all in Lindale, 730 Friday night, visitor side. Be there.